In this video, let's do a quick review of the equation of a line. And in particular, let's focus in on identifying and interpreting both the slope and the y-intercept of a line. So many of you are probably used to the form of a line y equals mx plus b. And that's essentially what we're going to be working with in this class, but we're going to reorganize that and relabel a little bit with uh, some different variables. And so I'm going to need all of you to get comfortable with y equals a plus bx as the main form of the equation of a line, uh, at least for statistics. And given that form, our y-intercept is going to be the point 0a, and the slope, it's still going to be the number in front of x, is going to be the b value. Um, what's most important is not just identifying the y-intercept and slope, but interpreting what they actually mean. And so let's try to tackle that right now. So let's look at example one. For each house that an electrician visits, she charges an automatic $75 to drive to the house, plus an additional $100 per hour to work at the house. So let's let Y equal the total amount of money that the electrician is charging, and let's let X be the total number of hours of work at a particular house. Now it's very common to look at relationships like this, the relationship between the number of hours worked and the total amount that the electrician charges, it's, it's really common to look at those relationships in a few different ways. So if you look at the relationship in the form of a table, we describe that as a numerical way of looking at the relationship. If you look at things in the form of a graph, maybe plotting these points, then that's a, a graphical way of looking at the relationship. And it's, it's always nice to have a good visual. Um, and then if we look at the relationship in the form of a linear equation, so it's a little abstract, um, this is our algebraic way of, of looking at that relationship. And the, uh, the, the presentation that I'm going to ask you all to get comfortable with in statistics is this last one. We're going to be working with uh, these abstract equations in this class. And when working with these equations, it's going to be important that you have the ability to identify the y-intercept and the slope, and also interpret what they mean. So we're going to go through that right now. Um, and I will add, sometimes when I'm working with these abstract equations like this, I will write in, sometimes for myself, what y actually stands for and what x actually stands for. So sometimes it would help me, like in a situation like this, to label this as the, the, total, num the total amount of charges would equal $75 for the ride over to the the house plus $100 times the number of hours that the electrician is at that particular house. So y equals 75 plus 100x is really the exact same thing as the total charge is equal to 75 plus 100 times the total number of hours. Okay, so now let's see if we can state and interpret the y-intercept, recalling that the y-intercept is the point when x equals 0. And I want to focus again on uh, on this abstract or this equation form of the relationship that we're working with. I don't want to discourage anybody from trying to work with a table or a graph to identify things like y-intercepts, uh, but it is going to be very important, and I do want to encourage you to, uh, to be able to work with an equation to find things like a y-intercept. So all we need to do is plug x equals 0 into our equation and find y to, to be able to identify the y-intercept in this algebraic type of way. And so uh, doing so, we, we would get y is equal to 75 plus 100 multiplied by 0. And clearly 100 multiplied by 0 gives us 0, and so that term disappears. And so we just end up with y is equal to 75. And so our y-intercept is the point. When x is equal to 0, y is going to be equal to 75. So we get the point 0, 75. Remember, in the very beginning of this video, I said we're going to be working with equations in the form y equals a plus bx. And I did mention that your y-intercept, the y-intercept is going to be the point 0, comma a. And uh, you could see that that's exactly what we ended up with here. We had y equals 75 plus 100x, and our y-intercept ended up being 0, 8. Now, what does it mean? How do we interpret this point? Well, 
all we need to do is we need to think kind of like how we did right here, where we thought about what our variables actually represent. And since y is the total amount charged by the electrician, and x is the total number of hours worked, then this the interpretation of this y-intercept would be the total amount charged by an electrician when is $75 when that electrician works zero hours. Okay, so let me write that out. The total charge by our, by our electrician is $75 when working zero hours. And so I guess I would just ask you at this point, does this really make any sense? I mean, would it ever make sense um, for an electrician to charge you uh, $75 and they never even walked in your front door? Um, probably not. And so given that, I will say that the y-intercept in this case is really not interpretable. And so let me just add that right here. In this case, this is this y-intercept is really not interpretable. In some problems, the y-intercept will be interpretable, but in this case, it really doesn't make sense to interpret the y-intercept um, as, as we just did, because no electrician is going to charge you $75 without walking in your front door, at least none that I'm aware of. Okay, so now let's see if we can interpret the slope. So I'm going to take you through a bit of a process to understand how to interpret the slope, but hopefully you can stay with me on this because I think it's going to really help you think about slope, especially in the context of a statistics class. So let me write down our equation again. We're working with the equation y is equal to 75 plus 100x. Okay. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to substitute in x equals 2 and x equals 3 into our equation. So when we substitute in x equals 2 and x equals 3, we get the following. You can see that we end up with y is equal to 75 plus 100 times 2. When we plug in the x equals 2, this is 75 plus 200, which gives us a total of 275. And then when we plug in x equals 3, it leads us to 75 plus 300, which is 375. So the question that I'm asking here is when we plugged in x equals 2 and x equals 3, how are the y values differing? And you can see that the difference between 375 and 275 is 100. So our y values are differing by 100 in this case. Let's do the exact same thing and plug in x equals 6 and x equals 7 now. And so you can see when I plug in x equals 6, I get 75 plus 100 times 6. My y is equal to 75 plus 100 times 6, which leads me eventually to 675. And when I plug in x equals 7, I get y is equal to 75 plus 100 times 7, which is 75 plus 700, or 775. So once again, if I ask the question, how do the y values differ? You'd say, okay, well, the difference between 775 and 675 is 100. So it's the same difference in y values here that we saw when we looked at the difference in y values right here. And so what was common between these two parts? Well, in part one and in part two, what we did is we plugged in two x values that differed by one. You see here we plugged in x equals two and x equals three, they differed by one, and the y values differed by 100. And then down here, the x values differed by one. We plugged in six and seven, and once again, the y values differed by 100. And one of the cool things that would would happen here is we could take absolutely any two x values that are going to differ by 1 and their corresponding y values are going to differ by 100. And so what we do is we say that this we say that y differs by 100 for each one unit difference in x in this problem. So let me let me highlight that here. So we can say that y differs by 100 for each one unit difference in x in this problem. And in the context of our problem, uh, notice that this means that the total charge by the electrician differs by $100 when the total number of hours worked differs by one. So it's always helpful, again, to think about what your variables mean. But here's the big takeaway. Remember, we're working with a line in the form y is equal to a plus bx. And when we're working with 
our line in that format. We have y is equal to 75 plus 100x. And I want you to observe that 100, which is the, the amount that y, y differs by for each one unit difference in x, happens to be the b value in our problem. Okay, We call this b value the slope. And based upon the process that I really just walked you through, I want you to always think of the slope as the amount that two y values are going to differ for a one unit difference in their corresponding x values. Sometimes it's actually even helpful to, to take your slope when you're looking at an equation like this y equals 75 plus 100x and put that slope over the number one. Because in statistics, again, when we have a number in front of x, the way that we are going to interpret it is the amount that our y values would differ for a one unit difference in the x values. And so now maybe this is even reminding you of other formats of working with slope before. Like maybe you've seen notation like this, and I'm not going to really get into a ton of this right now, but maybe you've seen change in y divided by change in x. Or maybe you've seen rise over run, things along those lines. Um, like I said, I'm not going to really get into it right now, but I, I want you to know that, that, that these formats that we're not talking about right now really um, address slope in the exact same way that, uh, that we're addressing it here in statistics. We're in statistics, we're looking at how much our y values are going to change for a one unit change in our x values. And that's what this is saying. This is saying how much are our y values changing for each change in our x values. Or this is saying, when you're looking at a, on a graph, a rise, you're looking at a change in your y for a particular change in your x values. And so um, there is a lot of overlap uh, with the, uh, the different formulas for slope and the ways of thinking about slope. But in statistics, whenever you see a line like this, I want you looking at that, looking at the number in front of x and interpreting it automatically as that's how much two y values would differ for a one unit difference in their corresponding x values. Okay, so let's do a quick summary now. So once again, we are going to be working with lines in the form y equals a plus bx, and we call this slope-intercept form of the equation of a line. And when you look at that line, the y-intercept is the point 0a. And the point 0a reveals the value of y when x is equal to 0. And I encourage you to think about what x represents and think about what y represents. And then you can actually try to interpret the y-intercept and see if there's any important meaning behind it. And in some cases, uh, the y-intercept might not be interpretable, and that's totally fine. But the piece in this class that will always be interpretable and will always be extremely important to interpret is going to be the slope. So the number in front of x, the b value, is what we call the slope of an equation. And based upon the process that we just went through, you can uh, hopefully remember that the slope reveals how much two y values differ when the corresponding x values differ by one. So this is, this is really the, the the big definition that I want you to walk away from this particular video with. Okay, all right, so let's do one more example now. So in example two, it says the following display from the TI-84 presents the equation of a line that predicts the price of certain stock Y from the prime interest rate in percent X. Okay, and so you're going to see this set up later in the class. This is going to be in module four and when we're working with linear regressions and all of that. But right now, all we're going to do is make a substitution for the A value into the equation. We're also going to make a substitution for the B value, which we know is the slope, into the equation. And uh, you can see here that we're going to be rounding both A and B to four decimal places. And then we'll try to get to the point where we are uh, identifying and interpreting the slope and the y-intercept. Okay, so... Let's substitute in our a value first. So we're going to have y is equal to, we're going to enter 1.88921607, but we only want to round to four decimal places. So if I'm rounding, if I'm rounding to four decimal places, then that means that I'm going to be going to the 8892, looking at the number immediately after the two, 
to determine if my rounding digit's going up one. And in this case, since that number after my rounding digit is not five or greater, then my A value will stay as 1.8892. Okay, so 1.8892. And then we say plus the B value. And again, four decimal places. So you can see that I'm going out to the four, but then looking at the number just after the four, which if it's five or greater is going to cause the four to get bumped up by one. And since the number after that rounding digit is five, then the four is going to get bumped up by one. So my B value, my slope becomes 0 0.3. 555. Five. And don't forget that we do have to put that x in there in the uh, equation of a line. Okay, so let's state the y-intercept and interpret what it means. Well, we remember from before that the y-intercept is going to be uh, this number, and, and to be a little bit more specific, our y-intercept is the point zero a, so it's going to be the point zero comma 1.8892. And let's think about what our variables are in this case. So our x variable is the prime interest rate in percent, and our y variable is the price of a certain stock. And so the way that we would interpret this is we would say the price of a certain stock, so the price of a certain stock is equal to one point eight eight nine two when the prime interest rate is zero so the price of our certain stock equals one point eight eight nine two when x is equal to zero and x stands for the prime interest rate so let me just finish that out so when the prime rate is zero Okay, and so uh, we could probably talk to an economist about this, um, but uh, this might not be interpretable. I'm not sure if the prime rate, if it ever makes sense for the prime rate to be zero. Um, I know we're living in some interesting economic times, but uh, if the prime rate can never be equal to zero, then it really would never make sense to interpret the y-intercept. Of course, uh, if an economist would say, yes, the prime rate could be equal to zero, then maybe this would have a little bit of meaning. But again, uh, as you heard me mention before, uh, we don't necessarily always have uh, a y-intercept that will be interpretable. Okay, and lastly, let's state the slope and interpret what it means. And so the slope, we know, is the number in front of x. And so I'm actually going to go back to it, and I'm going to write it over 1, kind of using the strategy that I, that I described at the end of the, uh, the previous example. And we are going to interpret the slope, and here I'll, I'll even write this down. I'll say b is equal to 0 0.355. So we are going to, in, uh, 0 0.3555. So we are going to interpret the slope as the amount that two y values differ for a one unit difference in x values. But let's put a little bit meaning behind this. Let's, let's actually say what our y values and x values are. And so we would say, that the price of a certain stock would differ by 0 0.3555 for every one unit difference in the prime interest rate. Okay, so let me write that down. Okay, so here it is. The price of our certain stock differs by 0 0.3555 for each one unit difference in the prime interest rate in percent. Okay, so hopefully this, this video helps you think about slope uh, and y-intercept. And uh, like I said, you're going to be seeing a lot of this uh, later in the course. And in statistics, just always remember that we think of slope, that number in front of x, as the amount that your y values would differ for a one unit change in x. And if you can remember that definition, then that's going to help you an awful lot uh, throughout this class. So thanks again for watching this video and uh, be sure to reach out to your instructor if you have any questions. Thanks.